In this video, we're going to discuss something called the direct comparison test. So, direct comparison test. And we can abbreviate the direct comparison test using uh, three letters, uh, DCT. So from now on, we'll just call it the DCT. So the direct comparison test has the following assumption. So let 0 be less than a sub n, which is less than or equal to b sub n for all n. Now, this condition can be relaxed. You can restate this and say, oh, for all n bigger than 50, or for all n bigger than 5 million. As long as it's for all n from some point on, everything here holds. So, 1. If you add up all the b's, so if you look at the infinite sum of the b's, you notice I didn't uh, start the sum anywhere. It doesn't matter where you start, so we'll just assume it's an infinite sum. I'm purposely omitting the infinity and uh, where we start. That's, that's okay to do. So if you add up the b's, and it converges. So if you add up all the b's, and it makes sense. Well, the a's are smaller than the b's. So then if you add up the a's, it should also make sense. So then the sum of the a's also converges. So that's the, the intuition behind it. The a's are smaller than the b's. If you add up the b's and it makes sense, then if you add up the a's, it should also make sense. Two, if you add up the a's, so if you look at the sum of the a's, and it doesn't make sense, if it diverges. So if you add up the a's and they don't make sense, well, the b's are bigger than the a's. So then that shouldn't make sense either. So then the sum of the b's diverges as well. It's an interesting thought process. It's interesting to go through this in your head and make sense of it. Because when it does make sense, it's like, oh, okay. So that's the direct comparison test. So how do you use it? So I actually don't think about this every time I use it. There's just another way I do it, and I'm going to show you. So let's do an example. Let's say we're trying to show, or we're trying to determine, rather, whether this infinite sum will start at 1, go to infinity, of 1 over n squared plus 3. Does this converge or does this diverge? Okay, so method 1, the first thing you should always do, rather, is look at this and make an opinion. So basically, if you just look at 1 over n squared plus 3, when n is really big, who cares about the 3? Like, if it's 20 million squared plus 3, it's not going to make much of a difference. So it's negligible. So you really only care about the highest order term. So this really is kind of like 1 over n squared. So if you add up 1 over n squared, it, you get a p-series that will converge because p is equal to 2, which is bigger than 1. So this is pretty much like a convergent p-series. So once you know that, then you know what you're trying to show. So we're trying to show convergence. Okay. So when you're trying to show convergence, this is the important part. This is how I do it. When I'm trying to show convergence, I always put a less than. Because I want to show that this is smaller than the, you know, some, something else that converges. So whenever you're showing convergence, you put a less than. Okay, showing convergence, put a less than. I'm actually going to put a less than or equal to, just in case. It's the same thing. It just allows for more freedom. It allows for equality. And this is actually less than or equal to 1 over n squared. And the reason is n squared plus 3 is bigger than n squared. So this fraction here is smaller than this fraction. So we're allowed to do that. So we've satisfied the first condition in the direct comparison test. We've shown that this is less than this. If you look up here, it's your a sub n. Your a sub n is less than or equal to b sub n. And... Now we have to determine or explain, oops, notifications, let me close that. Now we have to explain why the sum of these uh, actually converges. So the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, this converges 
by the p-test. So by the p-test, since p equals 2, which is bigger than 1. So we have that this is less or equal to this. And if you add up these, it converges by the p-test. So thus, our original series, so I'll just say our OG, OG means original, converges by the DCT. Let me go over that one more time very carefully. It's a lot. And it's important that when you're doing these problems, you know, whether it be for yourself or, or for a class, that everything is justified 100% as, as you see it here. It's not enough to just say, oh, converges, DCT, P-test. No, no, no. It's got to be, you know, it's mathematics. It is a logical progression of coherent and correct thoughts. So you look at this problem and you say, okay, the three doesn't matter. It's pretty much like a P-series, so it should converge. So now you just have to show it. So because you're showing convergence, you start by writing down your piece here, your 1 over n squared plus 3. And because you're showing convergence, you put a less than. I just memorize it. If I'm showing convergence, I put a less than. You know you can drop the 3 because n squared plus 3 is bigger than n squared, so the fraction here on the left is smaller. Then you just have to explain why the sum of these converges, which we did here. We say it converges by the p-test. So therefore, our original series converges by direct comparison. Let's do one more. Let's say we have the infinite sum as n runs from 3 to infinity. Let's say 3 to infinity. 1 over, um, how about just n minus uh, 1. So in this case, we know that this is very much like 1 over n. Right? It doesn't really, uh, the 1 doesn't matter. And we know that 1 over n if we add it up, it'll become a divergent p-series because p is equal to 1. So what we were trying to show is we're trying to show divergence. So when you're trying to show divergence, you want to show it's bigger than the terms of a divergent uh, series. So you can put a 1 over n here, and everything is good. And the reason is n minus 1 is smaller than n. So this fraction here on the left is bigger than 1 over n because the bottom piece is smaller. Think about it. If you have 1 over 0.1, that's bigger than 1 over um, 2, right? Because 1 over 0.1 is 10, <laughs> and that's bigger than 0.5. So when you're showing divergence, you want to put a greater than. So now we just have to explain why the sum of these terms diverges. So the sum of 1 over n from 3 to infinity is a divergent, let's just say it diverges and we'll explain why, it's a divergent p-series, saying it a little bit differently, since p is equal to 1, which is less than or equal to 1. So now we have satisfied the criteria for the direct comparison test. We have that this is bigger than this, We've explained that these diverge via the p-test. So thus, our original series diverges by the direct comparison test, by the DCT. So the most important thing that you should take away from this is how to do it, how to do these problems. And just remember that if you're trying to show convergence, just put a less than there. If you're trying to show convergence, divergence, put a greater than. So to show convergence, you do this. To show divergence, you do this. And I just honestly memorized this. Okay, It's just memorized. Sure, the explanation at the beginning is really, really cool once you get it, but you don't have to think that hard to actually do the problem. You can always remind yourself of what's going on, but it really becomes a memory thing. You just end up memorizing it. I hope this video has been helpful.